next, okay, let's define what is uh, what are financial institutions, okay? So financial in institutions are inter intermediaries or bridges between the fund sources and the fund, fund users, okay? For example, ng financial institution is banks, okay? Uh, for example, si Banco, kinukuha niya yung savings ng mga tao, okay, and other deposits, and then um, niloloan nila from the investor. So, ang source ng fund is tayo na nagsisave, okay, tapos sila yung nagiging bridge. Si financial institution yung bridge papunta sa mga investors or sa mga gustong mag-loan sa kanila. Okay? So, those are financial institutions. Again, pa, sila lang yung bridge, okay, na nag-fulfill between sa para yung pera na sinisave natin, okay, mapautang sa iba, ma, mapaloan sa iba, and then mag-earn yun ng interest. Okay, though, ganon ang sistema ng bako kaya sila kumikida. And then, nag-earn din ng interest yung pera na dineposit mo sa kanila. Now, let's discuss the different banking institutions that we have, okay, here in the especially here in the Philippines. The first bank, uh, banking institutions that we have are commercial banks. So, kanina nabanggit ko naman na siya, di ba? So, commercial banks are, uh, its primary function is to accept saving deposits, check deposits, and time deposits. Okay? So, um, they also offer short-term loans, they accept drafts, letters of credit, they give discounts on promissory notes, bills of exchange, or any document on credit. Okay, example ng commercial banks natin are PNB, BPI, Metrobank, BPO. So, those are commercial banks. So, again, the primary function to accept savings deposits, check deposits, time deposits. Okay, and then they also offer loans, okay, for uh, for the people. Next one is, is thrift banks. Okay, what are thrift banks? I know, siguro yung iba nakakakita na nito or hindi pa rin sila aware. Okay, thrift banks specializes in offering savings accounts and originating home mortgages for consumers. Sometimes it is just called a thrift. Okay, so it's for, um, it is also sometimes referred as savings and loan associations. Okay, so para kayong nag-iipon, ganyan, and then they will offer you home mortgages, okay, sa mga consumers nila. Um, sa Philippines, ayan, uh, some examples are, um, BPI Direct Savings Bank, um, Bank One Savings and Trust Corporation, Bataan Savings and Loan Association, Incorporated, basta may nakalagay na Savings and Loan Association. Ganun. Those are thrift banks. By the way, uh, yung BPI Direct Savings Bank pala is a commercial bank. Okay, basta sa thrift banks, it, uh, sa pangalan niya nakalagay Savings and Loan Association. So, yun, basta they are um, expensive parang expertise nila, specialty nila na mag-offer ng home mortgages sa mga consumers nila. Next one is our, our rural banks. Okay, rural banks are based in the rural areas which mobilize financial resources and control and extend credits to farmers, cottage industrialists, and other rural-based economic operators. Most of the time, when we say rural bank, parang ang primary, um, parang ang primary task nila or primary purpose nila is to lend loans sa agriculture, sa mga farmers. So, if you will see um, uh, yung mga banko na rural bank of, for example, um, rural bank of, and then gantong place, rural bank of Nueva Vizcaya, rural bank of uh, Bulacan, or I'm not sure if San Pascual. Ganun. So, those are rural banks. So, um, however, hindi lang naman siya sa mga farmers. It could be sa iba pang um, uh, sector or economic operators within a rural area. Okay, it is in a rural area. So, that's the primary function of rural banks. Ngayon naman, okay, let's discuss what are non-banking institutions. Okay, so yung mga diniscuss natin kanina, they are banking institutions and this time, these are non-banking. What are those? They are not banks. 
but can collect contributions that may be invested in business or stocks or loaned with interest to individuals and organizations, including government. Example na lang nito are GSIS, SSS, di ba pag-ibig. So yun, they are collecting contributions, pero hindi sila bangko. Okay, so mag magbibigay ka ng contribution mo, parang member ka nila, ganyan. And then, the money na i-contribute mo doon ay i-invest in, magpapaloan sila, parang bangko din. Okay, doon din sila kumikita. Or they will invest in stocks. Okay, and then, um, uh, syempre, when, we, when they invest in stocks, mas malaki yung interest nila or mas malaki yung tubo. Okay, and then, at the same time, halimbawa kung may nag-loan sa kanila, malaki yung uh, interest or yung itutubo nila. So, do, sa ganong paraan sila kumikita. Okay, you're contributing and then, syempre, uh, at some point or soon, you will benefit from that. Okay, but um, while you are, habang yung pera mo ay nandoon, hindi siya matutulog lang doon. It will be invested, it will be given as a loan sa ibang tao or sa ibang organizations. So now, let's proceed to the last topic in our lesson 1, which is the history of Philippine banking system. So I will not uh, elaborate more of this, but I just want to emphasize that ever since the 16th century here in the Philippines, na establish na yung or nag start na yung banking sa Philippines. Okay. Now, um, uh, syempre, hindi pa perfect yung system before. nag improve siya. There are changes and even yung mga American or mga Spain, yung mga Spanish na nag, uh, nag invade sa atin, yung mga sumakop sa atin, they put uh, banking services. Okay, so kaya nagkaroon tayo ng idea with the banking system. Now, um, uh, I just want to emphasize the uh, establishment ng Central Bank of the Philippines or ng Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Okay, it was established uh, in January 3, 1949, okay, it was founded. Ano ang um, purpose ng central banks? Okay, central banks was given sole authority to issue the country's paper money. Sila lang ang gagawa ng pera here in the Philippines. Okay, they will regulate and supervise the country's banking system. If you know, for example, um, they will um, iti-check nila yung mga banko. Siyempre, hindi ka naman kaagad-agad na dapat na magtayo ng sarili mong banko. So, iti-check nila yan lahat. They will um, supervise everything. For example, may nagsarang banko. Ayan, magbabawi mo pa ba yung pera mo? Dun sa nagsarang banko. So, ganun siya. Si Central Bank yun. And then, um, uh, its um, primary goal also is to provide their country's currencies with price stability. Okay? So, ang function sa atin ni Central Bank, mag-provide ng price stability at by controlling inflation. Okay, yung mga pagtaas at pagbaba ng presyo. So, it also acts as the regulatory authority sa ating monetary policy at provider and printer ng mga notes and ng coins in circulation. So, yun. So, sila lang ang may karapatan na mag-print. Okay? So, that's all for our lesson 1. Okay, so I have some questions for you to ask and for you to research. Okay, so you can research. Um, so, why do you think, um, bakit na, dahil, di ba, sabi nga nila parang sa Philippines, maraming may hirap. So, yan, bakit hindi na lang magprint na magprint ng maraming pera ang Banko Central ng Pilipinas at ipamigay sa mga may hirap? Di ba, pwede naman yun. So, that is our question for research. Okay, and then, um, and then we will talk about that we in our discussion sa mga sa susunod. And then, um, uh, so yan, what will happen if there are lots of money in circulation within the country? And what will happen kapag sobrang kulang naman ng money in circulation within the country? Okay, so if you happen to watch this and then um, hindi naman kata estudyante, pero you have an idea, you can post your ideas on the comments below. Ayan. And then, um, uh, so that we can inform others, okay, we can exchange data, we can exchange information sa iba pang nanonood. So, yun lang. Thank you for watching and I hope that you learned a lot in this lesson.